uh, the dominant narrative of British life has become lost. And this is what I was trying to say in the film, is that, is that uh, everyone can, as it were, argue their rights, their background, their culture, other than uh, British rights, British culture, British norms. You, I, you think, imply, well, I think it makes it a lot easier to integrate it, people if you know what you're integrating you into. You imply there's a difference between British culture and, and kind of minority rights. They're not. No. It's all one and the same but thing. Maybe, we maybe, come maybe, together. But no, but maybe, sometimes they run minute, very I much mean, involved. You should, you should tend involved. to joust frequently. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video where Douglas Murray debated a lot of speakers on the topic multiculturalism and i believe the video was actually titled the eight britain douglas murray confronts muslim scholar with ash truths wow i believe this is going to be an interesting one let's start with the video go you are about to see douglas murray dismantle a muslim scholar with logic and facts douglas murray gets challenged after he just delivered a speech criticizing multiculturalism Douglas Murray brilliantly answers the question with courage and truth. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Um, so Douglas says, um, discussing multiculturalism, um, it means that if you were a white English girl born into a white English family and your family decided to marry you against your will to a randy old pervert, the state would intervene. But if you had the misfortune to be born into an Asian background family and the same happened, the state would look the other way. Is he not even allowed to say those things? Of course he is. Who said he wasn't? I mean, there's a lot of straw men in this debate. No one says Douglas is not allowed to express his view. In fact, the dominant narrative right now is anti-multiculturalism. In fact, I'm the minority in, in a different sense. Uh, not Douglas in terms, of the, in terms of the debate. And of course, no one says it's racist to be opposed to multiculturalism. Of course not. What I would say on that specific issue that you raise, for example, forced marriages, is it's just not true. The state doesn't look the other the way. The, the Foreign Office and the Home Office have a unit that goes out to Pakistan to rescue British girls who've been sent out there. And no, no supporter of multiculturalism, and I would count myself as one, defends forced marriages on multicultural grounds. So it's the whole thing is okay. a straw man argument. And, th and that is an accusation levelled at, at many of those who argue from your standpoint that you paint with far too broad a brush. For example, you talk about immigrants despising the country they live in. How many immigrants despise the country they live in? Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be a very large percentage for it to cause huge problems, as we learned in 2005, uh, to our great cost. Uh, first of all, I, I, do, I don't agree there's this thing... Th immigrants. No, no, no. I'm saying people who come to this country and who are then taught uh, and, and acquire a sense of hatred towards this country. First, I mean, what we're seeing in Britain is a, f is a form of reverse assimilation. People are less integrated uh, in this generation than their parents and grandparents because there is less desire and, uh, 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 and uh, to actually get involved in the country they're in. And, and another thing, this isn't a straw man argument about the forced marriage issue because, yes, it's true the FCO has now got a forced marriage unit. It was very late in coming. And the phenomenon of uh, uh, girls of Asian background being married off had been going on for decades mm -hmm. until government got involved. Oh, no, one's no one's denying I, that, I but it, was, it wasn't going on maybe, because of I multiculturalism. I don't, I don't want to get hung up because, on forced yeah. marriages because we, we, yeah. we could talk about We're, we're talking about the broader yes. aspect of, of multiculturalism. Douglas is wrong to say that a younger generation is not as integrated. But you can't have it both ways because on the one hand you have said yourself mm. that it alienates uh, particularly the British Muslim community when people paint in mm. the, the brush strokes that Douglas is using. So you talk about the alienation, yet when he talks about the alienation, you say it's not true. Douglas Murray asserts that multiculturalism, as a policy, has been one of the most harmful and divisive pursued by Western governments since World War III. He emphasizes that this policy is often misunderstood, confusing it with multiracialism or pluralism. Multiculturalism means that the state should not impose its values or expectations on immigrants, but should instead accommodate their demands. This approach has led to significant problems. Murray's critique is rooted in the idea that this policy has allowed immigrants to live in Western countries without integrating or adopting the cultural values of their new homes. Instead of fostering unity, it has created isolated communities that, in some cases, show no loyalty to their host countries and may even harbor resentment. This issue became especially apparent with the rise of radical Islam, which highlighted the dangers of nurturing generations of immigrants who feel alienated and hostile towards Western values. One of Douglas Murray's arguments is that multiculturalism might have continued unchallenged if not for the rise of radical Islam, which has shown how dangerous it can be when immigrant communities do not integrate and instead foster hostile attitudes towards their host countries. This problem is not just about religion, but about the broader failure to integrate and share common values. This argument is supported by several alarming trends. 
For instance, after the 2005 London bombings, which were carried out by British-born extremists, there was a stark realization that radical ideologies had taken root in some Muslim communities. This incident showed that even second-generation immigrants could become radicalized if they felt alienated from the mainstream culture. A report by the Henry Jackson Society in 2017 found that nearly half of all Islamist terror plots in the UK between 1998 and 2015 involved British citizens or residents. This statistic underscores Murray's point about the dangers of allowing radical ideologies to fester within isolated communities. The report also highlighted the role of foreign-funded mosques and Islamic centers in promoting extremist views, which further complicates the integration process. Murray's call for reasserting a common cultural narrative is about creating a sense of unity and shared purpose. He believes that from a young age, individuals should be taught about the values and history of their country to foster a sense of belonging and loyalty. This approach is not about erasing individual cultures, but about ensuring that everyone understands and respects the core values that hold society together. Statistics on social cohesion also highlight the benefits of integration. Countries with higher levels of social integration tend to have lower crime rates and better economic outcomes. Let me just take a poll, one poll, to bring some facts into the debate. In 2009, Gallup did extensive polling of Muslim communities across Europe. They found that British Muslims were more likely to identify with Britain than non-Muslim Britain, 77% to 50%. They found that British Muslims were more keen on living in mixed areas than segregated areas than non-Muslim Britain, 68% to 57%. So I don't buy this caricature yeah. uh, from the right, and which says all young Muslims are out to blow stuff up and don't like Gina, living and here. It was Not very me, interesting, not anyone I know, Andrew, none of my friends. Andrew raised a very interesting point. I mean, you, you were describing the bombers as immigrants. At what point do people cease to be immigrants in this country and become, in your mind, uh, nationals well, or the, British the, the or point, uh, part the, of the, the landscape? As a, as a friend of mine who uh, immigrated here himself says, uh, the point where you become British is the period where you realize you don't get any extra uh, rights than anyone else, any extra sensitivities than anyone else, any extra uh, uh, inducements than anyone else. You get else. respect you just, for your it, culture. You get, you ju- all you get is to put up with the same crap the rest of us get to put up with. Mm. That's the deal. N- no, no extra oh, thing. And the thing, is, and the thing is that at the moment, uh, the dominant narrative of British life has become lost. And this is what I was trying to say in the film, is that, is that uh, everyone can, as it were, argue their rights, their background, their culture, Culture other than uh, British rights, British culture, British norms. You, I, you think, impli- we, I think it makes it a lot easier to integrate people if you know what you're integrating you into. You imply there's a difference between British culture and, and kind of minority rights. They're not. No. It's all one and the same thing. Maybe, we maybe, come maybe, together. But, no, but maybe, sometimes wait, they run I very mean, much I know involved. You should tend evolved. to joust frequently, but I, I'm very keen to just yeah. unpick some of this. At the last election, even the Labour Party held up their hands and they said, you know what, we made white working class mm. people feel alienated, we drove them, we herded them yeah. into the hands of extremists. Well, as we know, the Labour Party could be wrong on a lot of things. So one they of the were pe- wrong about that? Well, one of the people who was saying that, of course, was then disqualified from his seat for race-baiting in Oldham. So I'm not going to take lessons from Phil Willis on what integration looks like. But, but just on the specific point the of message, the message. I want to know about mm. the message. You think that message was wrong? I think, the me- I think there is an issue with working-class communities, white working-class communities, insecurity. I think that's an economic issue. To pretend it's about okay. language or forced marriages or these issues no, is it's rubbish. A, it's about, and it's and about I've got to address this terrorism okay. point. It's Sorry, 7-7 seven, seven bombers, we very brief, you've had a long film, the 7-7 seven, seven bombers, let me just make a very specific point, could speak English, married of their own accord, played cricket, they were not this in forced right, marriages. Or tra- I have to let Dr. Murray have a final word on this. This, yeah, is, the tra- the first this is the tragedy, is that, th- is that there are people in this country who do not feel loyalty to this country, who do not feel they have to have any loyalty there to this political country, and we saw, and we saw there one of the end points that All can reach. All right, gents, I have to call time on this very fascinating and something I know will come back to. Thank you, Mehdi, for coming in. Mehdi Hassan presents a counter-argument to Douglas Murray's critique. Hassan defends multiculturalism by arguing that the state does, in fact, intervene in cases like forced marriages, and he emphasizes that not all immigrants despise their host country. While Hassan's points are valid to some extent, Murray counters by highlighting the broader risks and societal impacts posed by even a small percentage of hostile immigrants. Although Hassan's argument is valid, and these state interventions are crucial, they are often reactive measures rather than proactive solutions to the deeper issue of cultural integration. A policy of multiculturalism that allows for cultural practices incompatible with the host country's values can lead to social fragmentation. The 2005 London bombings, carried out by British-born extremists, starkly illustrate the danger of allowing radical ideologies to fester. This tragic event 
underscored the reality that even a small number of radicalized individuals can have catastrophic consequences for society. Various studies have shown that pockets of radicalization exist within certain immigrant communities. A 2017 report by the Henry Jackson Society revealed that almost half of all Islamist terror plots in the UK involve British citizens or residents. This statistic highlights the significant threat posed by homegrown extremism and supports Murray's argument that multiculturalism, as currently practiced, can inadvertently nurture environments where radical ideologies thrive. Additionally, Hassan's assertion that not all immigrants despise their host country, while true, does not address the critical issue that even a minority with hostile intentions can cause disproportionate harm. For example, a 2016 survey by the Think Tank Policy Exchange found that a significant minority of British Muslims expressed sympathy for extremist groups. Although these views are not representative of the majority, they indicate a troubling undercurrent that can lead to societal unrest and violence. While Mayi Hassan's defense of multiculturalism acknowledges the state's role in addressing extreme cultural practices, Douglas Murray's arguments underscore the broader and more profound risks posed by a lack of integration. Wow, what an interesting video. You can tell the debate was really eaten to an extent. And just by the title, Multiculturalism, the Eighth Britain. Douglas Murray confronts Muslim scholar with ash truth. Wow. I believe uh, just by the fact and the point uh, Douglas Murray have stated, I agreed with Douglas to some extent. And I believe British has its own identity. And we all understand that British identity is embodied and rooted in its culture is embodied in its tradition, is embodied in its value system. So I believe if you are migrating into a country or migrating into UK, you have to be able to adjust yourself in order to accommodate uh, the host country's culture, in order to accommodate the host, host country's tradition, in order to accommodate uh, the host country value system. And we all understand that uh, the British, they promote uh, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, and they promote multiculturalism. But you don't have to take that as an advantage, uh, as an advantage to impose your own culture on the people. Because I believe there are certain culture that the British people hold very dear to them, hold very sacred to them. So you don't have to come and impose your own culture on them or you don't have to take that as an offense that is against your own culture, is against your own belief and at the end of the day you call it an hate speech or you tend to say the people are becoming Islamophobic or you resort to uh, a violent action because you feel someone say something that offend you and I believe for the fact that you are living in a society you have no right not to be offended and even when someone tends to express his freedom of speech and you feel offended by that, there are better ways to address the issue rather than uh, uh, resorting to violence. And I believe a lot of immigrants come into uh, UK, come into UK in search of greener pasture. And I also believe that these people uh, they are coming from uh, they are coming from a country that has different culture, different value system, different tradition from the British tradition, from the British culture, from the British value system. So I believe in order for them to be able to integrate effectively and become uh, an economic and become uh, and become economic benefit to the host country, they have to be able to accept the host country culture. They have to be able to accept the host country uh, tradition they have to be able to adjust the host country value system, most especially uh, uh, people coming from uh, the Muslim countries. They have in their own country, they have their own law. So you coming into uh, Europe, coming into uh, UK, and you try to impose, instead of you integrating and aligning your culture with Britain culture, you tend to impose your own culture on the people. I feel that is totally unacceptable. We can utter recently 
Douglas Murray have been debating on uh, on, on some topic and he have been stating some facts consistently, facts like uh, Islam fundamentalists, Islam extremism, that a lot of these people, they come into UK, they come into Europe, they fail to integrate. Rather than integrating, they tend to impose their own culture, they tend to impose their own belief on the people. And these people, they tend to be easily offended when people try to express their freedom of expression, express their freedom of speech, they tend to be easily offended and they tend to call it an hate speech. In most uh, in most cases, they resort to violence and they try to hurt, 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 hurt people, which I believe is totally wrong. And I believe for a society to be to flourish, there is a need for the, for, the, for a society to flourish. There's a need for there to be uh, different ideas, different views, clash of different ideas can bring solution to a lot of problems. So I believe the fact that if you are coming into a country, there's a need for you to be able to adjust yourself to accommodate the host country culture, to accommodate the host country uh, uh, tradition, to accommodate the host country value system rather than imposing your own culture or imposing your own values or imposing your own uh, tradition on the people. Because what will be accepted in your own country might not be accepted uh, 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 in UK. So it's left for you to be able to align yourself in order to be able to accept uh, your host country's culture. And I've really learned a lot just by listening to Douglas Murray and also listening to Hassan. And I believe Hassan in question is also intellectually honest to some extent just by the argument he gave that uh, a lot of these uh, British people uh, that have been forced into marriage and taken out of British, that in most cases, the government always intervene by rescuing these people. And I think for that, I commend the government for that. But I still believe there are a lot of things to be done in order to uh, to set a playing ground whereby immigrants can accept our uh, uh, immigrants can accept the culture, the tradition, and the values of their host country, and they will be able to integrate effectively and become an economic asset to their host country. And I believe something can be done about this. I've really learned a lot just by listening to uh, Douglas Murray and also listening to Hassan. So I would like to hear your comments. Keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.